Hi everyone and welcome to uh, part two of my kit bash of ARC model 633 on a Panzer 1 Bison. Um, if you remember at the end of the last video I said everything had been finished bar the shouting. Um, I soon discovered there was quite a lot of shouting to be done. Um, basically I completely forgot to do the underside of the uh, Panzer itself. Um, not many people are really going to see anything under there. Um, it's really just for effect. Um, so not a lot of um, accuracy was done on that. But there's a few rivets and as you can see a few brackets etc. there. So if the viewer does have a look underneath at least there's something there for him. Um, you'll also, also notice that I've applied a lot of um, filler along the sides. I do this on most of my models where I'm going to be adding pigments and mud. It just saves me having to build out the, the pigments uh, later on in the process. And to do that, I use the um, humble model filler, this stuff here. Also at the front of the um, Panther, um, I completely forgot to put the lights on. So they've been done um, also along with the uh, brackets uh, for the fenders as well. So that was that lot completed. There was a few missing rivets here and there, um, which uh, came off during the cleaning process. Um, but other than that, that, that was basically it. Once that's all done, um, I then uh, proceeded to clean up the, all of the uh, model. Um, I use lighter fuel. Um, evaporates quite quickly, um, along with uh, cotton buds as well. Um, yeah, sorry, foam buds, so that all gets cleaned up nicely just to get all the grease mark marks off and all the fingerprints. Um, and as you can see from the bench, everything's all nice and cleaned. Um, try and reduce the amount of dust as much as possible. And then once all the items have been cleaned, um, they're all put away um, in sealed boxes and containers um, again. So once the painting process begins. Um, you're minimising the amount of dust and hairs etc that go on the parts themselves. Um, as far as the cleaning process goes um, it's quite basic J just go around with a, with a craft knife scrape off m m any glue spillages uh, using the sandy sticks um, and also uh, the fibreglass pen and then once that's um, all done um, you're pretty well much ready to start with the painting process. Once everything has been uh, cleaned up um, we can then start priming the plastic and the metal. Um, for the metal I use Mr. Metal Primer. This is wonderful stuff. You can just brush it on and it dries nice and evenly. Never had any issues with this at all. Um, as far as the actual paint primer goes um, for stuff, I'll, I'll come on to the actual um, Panzer itself, but for the um, gun carriage and, and, and other items, the smaller items, I use the uh, Badger uh, primer. Um, in this case, it will, I'll be using black for everything. Um, never ever had any issues with this primer whatsoever. Very pleased with the way it goes on and the way it dries. As far as the actual Panzer goes itself, um, that will be done using um, red primer. Um, in this particular case, uh, the Tamiya. Um, I don't know about you, but I struggle to get an even and thin surface on a model straight from the spray can. So what will happen is that I will decant it into a little pot like this and then put that straight into the airbrush. Um, there's going to be five, possibly six layers of co uh, acrylic coats going on to the model um, before we even start thinking about um, oil work and pigments etc so it's very important that all of the acrylic work is put on in very thin layers so let's start the process so there we have the um, primer which has been decanted and that will now go into the airbrush as you can see I've, I've laid down some uh, white paper over the bench to protect the surfaces as far as the airbrushes go um, I use throwaway airbrushes um, this is my 5mm um, uh, needle. Um, I also have the 2mm uh, and also 3mm. 
Um, last about two or three models, and then I'll just bin them and, and pick up some, some more. So what we'll do now is, is put the primer into the airbrush and we'll make a start on the painting process. So with the airbrush on medium pressure, we'll make a start. And like I said, very important to make sure you get some nice thin coats on the model. there we have the first coat as you can see very patchy and very light and all we now need to do is just to leave that to dry and then we'll add another coat on until you have just managed to get rid of all the patchiness and give it a very light coat altogether. I hear a lot, a lot of uh, times people complain about the airflow on their uh, airbrush now I've let this one go a little bit um, just to prove a point um, as you can see at the front of the nib here, it's all getting dry, it's all being clogged up and that ultimately will affect the paint flow uh, of your airbrush. So really all it is is just a matter of just untwisting the front nozzle, taking that off. I expect you can see how all that's all clogged up there. And then what you need to do is just get a, a bud, foam bud along with some of your um, airbrush cleaner and then it's just a matter, simple matter of giving that a good clean off also the nozzle itself just clean that out and literally within a minute that's all nice and clean and ready to go again with a smooth airflow So with all the uh, primer work uh, completed, let's see what we have. Uh, the main body of the tank's been done. Um, nice light coats. A little bit patchy, which shows that it's just a light coat that has gone on. No need to worry about that whatsoever. Um, I like to add contrast to my builds, um, as this um, improves the interest to the viewer. Um, so the main gun carriage itself, the actual SIG 33, I've actually primed in black. And this will actually be chipped in a different way, in a different colour, again to add contrast and interest to the build. And there we have the shield. And the actual bow itself. Um, also all of the equipment and all the little bit of extras will have been done in black as well. Um, as you can see here, this is the shield. That's come out particularly well pleased with that uh, but again as you can see some of the equipment here um, I don't think you've seen these yet but <clears throat> I managed to find some the toe pin at the back and also we've got some little cups there which I'll add onto the build itself near the end so now we're going to start the chipping process now I'm a big fan of uh, adding uh, layers uh, onto my builds um, because it adds depth and uh, contrast to the overall look of the model. So before we uh, start doing the hairspray chipping, I'm going to do a little bit of um, sponge chipping. Um, I just use a old piece of foam um, from a cushion. Just pull off a chunk, like so. Get your tweezers. And just pull out a little little ends of it just just to break it up so there's not a smooth finish to the actual piece of sponge that you're using and then grab it in the pliers like so and then in this particular instance I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo's metal colors and this one is burnt iron and you just need to dab it in the paint like so and then just take off all the excess these metal paints of Vallejo are very good but they are very watery indeed so most of that's taken off now it's important that we don't put a great deal of this colour onto the model um, this will only show through um, on areas which are extremely worn um, now my reference photos show that um, the actual hub here gets damaged quite a lot, a lot of deep scratches um, 
are found on this particular part of the the shield so don't have to be too fussy because again it's all going to get covered up but if we just create some chips on this particular area and then when we start doing the chipping process with the hairspray this will show through as well and then what will happen is that you'll get this wonderful um, 3D effect where you'll have the um, red primer as well as the silver as well as the top coat of grey showing through as well. First we're going to tackle the chipping on the uh, gun carriage itself on the SIG 33. Um, in the early days of World War II um, German armour was actually primed in dark grey. Um, so that will add a nice in, uh, bit of contrast to the actual Panzer body itself which as you already know is in red primer. Um, rather than coat the whole of the model in um, primer what we're going to do um, is just go along each of the uh, leading lines where we think there's going to be a bit of chipping um, and then uh, we'll add on the, 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 the top dark grey coat uh, using the hairspray method and, and then when it's chipped you, you'll get the, the lighter grey coming through. Um, so for chipping purposes uh, I'll be using um, anthracite grey which is a little bit lighter than the dark panzer grey that will go on top. So the um, outline of the uh, lighter grey has been put on the uh, 633 now. Um, I doubt if you'll be able to see it um, because the, the contrast is not that great with the uh, black primer but I can assure you there is a difference there and it will show through when the darker grey comes on. Um, as far as the um, chipping goes on an artillery unit you, you, you want it to be um, very subtle, you don't want it to be stark um, so that will work out well. So I shall uh, crack on and do all, all of the chipping now on the uh, vehicles. Um, I won't bore you with the details because there is an extensive video uh, on the, the, my YouTube channel addressing um, how to do all the techniques involved with hairspray technique chipping and winter camo. Um, however, on this build I would like to address the question of uh, modulation. Um, I do like to modulate my vehicles, but modulation and hairspray chipping don't go together very well at all. Uh, primarily because with modulation you're adding two or three layers of different shades of paint. In, in many instances you, you, you're using a brush which ultimately puts it on uh, thicker which makes it harder to chip and obviously there, there's issues with drying times, using masking tape, ripping off paint because of the hairspray underneath etc etc. So what I do like to do though is try and add contrast to the build by using different shades um, in an easier manner. So for example uh, if, if, if we look at the um, 633 the, the gun carriage, uh, that will be done in one particular shade. Uh, the outside of the shield in a different one, shade again, and the inside a different shade, etc. etc. So you, you, you're not doing modulation in its strictest form, but you are adding different shades uh, to each of the different components, again, to add interest and depth to your vehicle. So I have four different shades of grey, and as you can see there, very subtle differences. Uh, but once it, it's all applied to the model, you will be able to see the difference. Um, obviously the top coat, which is the main one, which is the Panzer Dark Grey. The Anthracite, uh, which we've already seen. This here is Grey Violet. And then finally, this one's the model colour, which will need to be uh, thinned down because it doesn't go through the airbrush very well, um, which has that little blue tint. Um, I'm not a great fan of blue tint on Panzer Grail vehicles, uh, but this one is so subtle you can hardly see it. Um, so right, I shall crack on and uh, show you the results. All the chipping has now been done, and I'm very happy with the way it's all gone. Um, the artillery um, pieces... Um, chipped particularly well. I don't know how well you can see the, the contrast in colours there. Um, I'll put some stills up later so you can see, see close up. Um, strictly speaking, yes, the barrel should be the uh, same colour, Panzer Grau, 
Um, however, I do like, uh, as I said before, contrast on my builds. Um, it's going to have some winter camouflage and obviously a lot more weathering. And um, when you see the the, the end result, you, you'll, you'll see that it, it does make an, a nice difference to the build. Um, the gun carriage again, very successful. Um, I, again, I'll, I'll do some stills, but uh, the, the subtle chipping, very pleased with the results on that as well. As far as the uh, wheels go, they, they, they've all been done. Um, wheels are never uh, the easiest things to chip. Um, because of all the grooves and, and the different edges um, but we've got some good coverage there um, the spoked wheels as well now with spoked wheels you'll always find that they have to go a specific way round on the model uh, so make sure you've got them in the right place uh, the right way round um, for when you do your uh, winter camouflage chipping because you may find out that you're doing the winter camouflage on the reverse of the wheel instead of the front. I also took the opportunity to, to do some uh, airbrushing in between uh, coats uh, of chipping drying. Um, so for example that the helmet's been done in field grow so that's ready for doing some work on later. Um, also we have a coat again in field grow and that will be detailed up when I do the detail painting later. Um, as far as the suspension units go, uh, I've just given those a, a basic coverage. They haven't been chipped um, because most of that is actually going to be rusted up because um, it's all uh, springs. Um, so with that complete now, um, we have three colours now on the model. So we have the red primer, uh, we, we have uh, some of the silver chip in and obviously the Panzer Grail. So it's all about building layers and so now we're going to look at the next layer that has to go on. Now to break up the uh, monotony of the uh, Panzer Grau, um, what I envisage on doing is putting a very uh, thin coat um, of light grey uh, which basically just breaks up the surface. Um, this is the, the grey that I use, uh, model colour, medium grey, Vallejo again obviously. Um, now model colour does not airbrush at all well. Um, so. What we need to do is to thin it down a bit. Um, I actually use um, Windeline, and that's just the container I keep it in. Here we go. Let's just move that up there. There we go. So good old fashioned Windeline. Um, don't ask me why. I just read it many years ago that that's the thing to to thin down your Vallejo with, and I've used it ever since. Um, so I've gone back to the um, five mil airbrush now. Um, so We'll just put a couple of drops with the pipette um, into the base of the actual airbrush itself. Then we'll put in some of the paint. Don't need a great deal. And then again, we'll finish off with some more windling. That'll um, then be mixed up with a cocktail stick, like so. And then when the consistency is right, what will happen is that I won't, I won't show because it's quite boring. Um, is that I will spray at arm's length um, on a very low pressure with the airbrush, and really you just got to do one, possibly two sweeps. Um, you won't be able to see it unless you look close up, but the overall impression is that you'll, you'll see a, a change in texture to, to the actual Panzer Grau itself. Okay, so that's all been done very quickly. Um, I don't know how well this is going to come out, but let's have a go. So that's the untreated side. And that's the side that's had the spray of grey on it you can see a few speckles there and it just breaks it up and I've also done the front as well okay so next we'll look at the next layer of um, layering that we need to do now 
So the next uh, layer of uh, dirt and grime and contrast that we want to add to the build um, is going to come in the form of splatter marks. Now the majority of this will all be lost uh, throughout the, the, the further weathering processes but you will still see some of it at the end and it does make quite a nice effect. Now we're going to be using uh, dark earth um, we've put a little bit in the palette as you can see and then it's just a matter of adding quite a bit of water because what you're really going to be splattering is dirty water okay so you, you've got to be fairly sensible with this um, you want to try and keep it to the areas where there is you know the chance of splatter marks but quite frankly don't don't be too concerned if it, it does go in places that you didn't really want it to go so you can either wipe it off um, um, or cover it up with, with, with further layers later on. Um, the good thing about um, using the acrylics for this, I mean obviously there will be further layers with the oils later on, but with the acrylics, um, if it's watery enough, um, the, the splatter mark will dry fairly clear in the middle, but leave a nice darker ring, um, which is quite a nice effect. So using the uh, part of your blade, um, It's just a matter of, hopefully you're picking this up, just a matter of just splattering it. There we go. That's all you've got to do. Very simple. And that will dry in nicely. I've put some of the parts together so you can actually see how that contrasting colours works. Um, very pleased with how that's looking. So you have the different colours, grey on the panzer itself compared to the contrast of the SIG and also the actual barrel itself. I'm just going to lift the camera up so we can do a sweep and you can see better there. So with the initial chipping being done, um, what I did was to move on to the winter camouflage chipping. Um, there's an extensive guide in my tutorial on how I've achieved this particular look. Uh, but basically what happened was I covered the um, model in another coat of two, well, two coats of hairspray. Um, and then using um, Insignia White from Vallejo, um, I applied the first coat of chipping. Uh, which you can see is the slightly darker areas and then once that was dry uh, again put down another couple of um, layers of hairspray and then the more whiter areas was just done with plain Vallejo white as you can see here I'll just give you a quick look around so you can see the effect um, as I said at the start I was after the worn out look um, and I'm really pleased with how that's come about as you can see there's lots of contrast lots of depth um, you still got a bit of the uh, red oxide there and I'm very pleased indeed there was the barrel that's had some chipping work done on it as well so now what will happen is that I'll make a start on all the fine detail painting and I'll walk you through how that goes as well
So with the winter camouflage finished, it's now time to uh, move on to the rest of the acrylic work, which is basically all the fine detailing. Um, I have that rare thing called the sun shining through my window at the moment, so apologies um, if you can't see some of the areas that we're talking about. Um, but basically I like a lot of colour in my uh, models, um, so it's just really a systematic um, process of going around the model, adding acrylic colour wherever I am. There will be specific little projects to do, uh, for example the radio here. Um, this will need some research to get the colours correct with the connectors etc. Um, also um, doing the mud in preparation for all of the pigments so all of this area will, will need to be done. Um, the artillery unit, very little colour that will need to go onto there. And then obviously all of the equipment and, and the small parts. Um, so over a period of time it will probably take me a few hours. Um, don't try and paint one particular area completely. Um, if you need to wait for the paint to dry, come back and improve, then that's the best way to do it. Um, I'll just take the camera off the stand. As you can see, I've got a whole array um, of paint brushes um, for the different ones that to use for whether it's oils or for the acrylics. Um, I have a little bowl of water there and, and the obligatory uh, drying towels as well. So... Um, I won't bore you with everything that I'm going to be doing on, on the model, uh, but one thing I will um, show you is uh, how I tackle uh, the underside uh, with the mud um, in preparation for the uh, pigments later on. So if we start on the lower hull, um, admittedly most of this will be taken up with pigments anyway, uh, but there will be areas that will still be seen and you don't want people asking the question why have you got pounds of ground mud along the bottom of your tank. Um, so we'll start along the bottom uh, with some dark earth, it's just a matter of doing some washes um, and then we'll move up a little bit with another shade of dark mud and eventually finishing off with light mud. Now remember this is only um, a base coat for the pigments and all the oil work to go on so you don't have to be particularly precise um, but it does add to the effect. Okay so there's the three colours in the palette little drop of water in there as well to help start with the washes and that's basically what you're after is, is sort of a wash um, style consistency um, so moisten up the brush and we'll start with the, the dark earth and let's get this down there so you can see in the sunlight and that's all it is a matter of doing is just putting washes along like so Obviously I would do the whole lot first, but for the sake of the camera, let's just clean the brush off. And then we'll move on to the darker, that's a little bit on the thick side, the slightly darker greener. And then you just, you just move up a little bit. And then you can see it's all blending into one. Try not to go too far up, because obviously the further up uh, the mud goes, it's more splatter marks than, than obviously solid mud itself. Um, and then lastly... We'll add a little bit of light mud as well. And there we go, that's that's the principle. Um, I'll crack on and do that and then I'll show you how, how we bring in the sponge work uh, to finish that off. Okay, I've just quickly stopped um, doing the washes because there's just something I want to show you. Um, as you can see here, um, the washes have dried and as you know that creates that awful tide mark which makes it basically look, look, look like water um, and the principles with the sponges is what we're trying to avoid so I'll just finish off with the light uh, mud and then I'll show you how we can get around that okay so with the washes finished um, as you can see there what we now need to do is blend that all in so it's just a matter of getting a little piece of sponge again put it in the tweezers and then go around just blending it Simple as that. And that will get rid of your tide marks. And make it more realistic. But again, 95% of this will not be seen. 
because of all the pigments will be on top. However, the 5% that will be seen, people will wonder how you've done that. And with all your builds, your 5% added on to more 5%, added on to more 5%, uh, creates a good looking build. Okay, I'm struggling doing this at arm's length, so I'll just turn the cam off and finish this off. Okay, so the whole of the uh, mud work has now been done um, as a base for the um, pigments later on in the process. Um, this was the side that I did uh, on camera. Um, not as good as what it should have been um, because you really do need to, to, to work closely on this. Um, however, you got the, the effect there coming round. The better areas done off camera, which is the rear. And this side here, as you can see, there's certainly a marked improvement with the shading and the merging. And then we've got a little bit there at the front. But again, this is just laying down bases, laying down layers um, to help with the overall look of the model. So, we're off and running with the acrylics. So, I shall crack on and finish the rest of the build and show you what I've done when I'm finished. Now one of the areas of the acrylic work which I enjoy doing are the wheels. Um, some people like to use masks uh, and then airbrush the tyres on. I personally find it quite therapeutic to actually uh, put it on with the brush. Um, it's quite straightforward, um, just a matter of um, getting some black paint um, and have it like a, a wash. And then hopefully I can do this on camera. If you've got it like a wash, then it will just, there we go, like a pin wash, the black line will just go all the way around, creating an initial barrier. So with the black line done all around the um, rim of the wheel, um, we now have a starting point for where to put the dark rubber. Um, don't forget to uh, do the back as well. Um, so again it's going to be rather difficult at arm's length but here we go let's give it a go and see how well we get on now what we don't want to do now is to go all the way up to the rim and this way we're going to have a no, let's bring it down a bit there we go now we're going to have that bit of contrast Between the two colours. All very boring, so I shall just I shall just crack on and get all these finished and then I can show you the next stage of just adding a little bit of contrast and interest to the wheels. So with the black uh, rim done and the dark rubber applied onto the tyres um, the last bit of detail um, is that we need to show a bit of wear um, on the actual wheel. Um, when the wheel goes into the tracks, the tracks will actually start to rub away um, this very thin ridge um, that goes around the outside of the metal part of the, the wheel itself. Um, so for that I will uh, use dark aluminium and uh, a very thin and small brush. Now there's no way I'm going to try and attempt this on the video because uh, you do need to get up close and personal and a very steady hand. Um, if you don't trust your own um, abilities with the brush then you may want to do the rim first and then do the line and the tyre afterwards. Um, if not it's just a simple matter of possibly having to touch things up um, if you've actually gone out of line so I think you can see that there that's come up quite nicely um, so that's it for the wheels uh, that will all be um, uh, varnished over now uh, with matte varnish and uh, we'll start to uh, get it ready for uh, the oils uh, further down the line while you're uh, using the dark aluminium you can do the uh, sprockets as well um, just need to do the, the teeth um, to show the wear of when it uh, goes in through the holes in the tracks so it's all quite straightforward and then the uh, rear idlers um, 
obviously on the actual part that touches the, the track so that's all been silvered up now as far as the actual um, wear goes on these um, the tracks only just touch the outer rim here uh, they don't touch the, 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 the middle sections at all um, so as you can see it was just a matter of silvering up the rim um, if you can't see that very well um, I'll post some stills as well Well, the acrylic work is now complete. Uh, this is one of my favourite parts of the modelling process. It gives you an opportunity to add colour to what would normally be a drab Panzer Grau tank. Um, all told, I use just over 30 different colours. Um, I'll go through some of the items now to show you how I've added value to your build. Uh, so hopefully this will give you some ideas for your own models. Uh, remember, however, these are only base coats. And further shadowing, lighting effects and weathering will be achieved uh, with oils so with the base itself um, as you can see there I will do stills at the end so you can see it in, in greater detail uh, but as you can see there the, the radio has been done a um, little bit of artistic license there um, but very pleased with how that's turned out um, coming around um, we have some of the tools um, the actual um, metallic ones were done in burnt uh, iron the um, handles, wooden handles on the um, wire snips there. That's only a base coat. I do all my wood effects uh, with oils. So I'll show you how I do that further uh, down the line. Um, the exhaust has come out particularly well. Um, I have just done a tutorial on, on how to um, do rust effects on exhausts. So if you pop in and have a look at that uh, video, that will give you an idea of how to achieve this effect. But it's basically just using different um, rust uh, colours um, as and laying down different uh, uh, washes. Um, so one thing at the front here, um, I don't know if you can see, we, I've put silver lining in the back of the lights. Um, right at the end of the build, um, I'll, I'll add a dob of uh, clear glue on there to sort of give a lens effect. Um, and as we've already seen before, uh, all the mud effects along the bottom. So that's the actual main body of the tank itself. Um, the SIG 33, um, on the back we have the um, sandbags. Um, they've had a couple of coats. Um, also done some uh, shadows effects there, but they'll come to life with the oils. Um, that little box, um, done the clamps in metallic colours, and then just added some wood effects. Um, to give that impression very pleased with how that's come out a dot of red on the handles again just to break up the monotony um, and then we have some metallic effects on the axles and the wheel rims have been painted in black so again very happy with how that's come out the actual shield itself um, very limited opportunity to add color here but the the rods i've done in brown um, again they'll be weathered with the um, oils i'd uh, particular pleased with the way the um, gun breech has come out um, there's three colors in there we, we have uh, metallic silver burnt iron but the, the central part itself I mixed in some bronze in there as well and that's just given that lovely little tint so very pleased with how that's come out and on the side um, the black panel there and obviously metallics on top as well some of the smaller stuff um, where we have to pay the most attention to uh, for example here we have the wicker baskets it would have been quite easy just to paint this in one colour um, but basically I laid down a, a base coat um, of uh, sand yellow and then uh, put a wash of um, light brown on top of that and then the leather straps were done in red leather um, and the actual buckles have been done in silver so you know you've got four colours just on the wicker basket um, along with the straps as well um, that's seven colors and as you can see that that sort of makes it stand out a bit better and again once the oils have been put on there 
they'll be even uh, more uh, realistic. Here we have the Mauser. Um, again, don't be put off by the, the light brown because that will all be uh, reddened up with the oils. Um, but again, there's six different silver colourings on the Mauser um, as well as the actual strap itself. And it just adds that extra bit of detail and interest to the viewer. The German helmet. Um, this is going to be upside down anyway um, on top of the, the build. So I wasn't particularly fussed about the, the top of the helmet but there's a little bit of winter camo on there. And as you can see I've done that in clear leather. Um, and again that will be um, weathered up with the oils. Particular fun with the um, site for the um, SIG 33. I was able to find some detailed information on the colours that we used um, for the actual uh, real thing itself. Um, so as you can see there we have some silvers. Uh, the telescopic site was done in uh, deck tan, uh, which is like a, um, a light grey silver at the top there is you won't see it here but there is a little red band going around that as well so very pleased with the way that's come out and as far as the, uh, all the bogies go um, very little work needed to be done on there it's just that the, the the springs themselves have all been rusted up and again they'll be enhanced with the further weathering process so that's that particular stage uh, complete now before you um, I've got to, to do the decals uh, yet um, which I'll show you how I do those. Um, I don't actually use the particular ones that come with the kit itself. Um, I try to use stencils um, and acrylics as much as I possibly can. So I'll show you later the, the processes involved in doing that. Um, once that's all been done, uh, before you start the, the weathering process, remember to cover your model in varnish. Protect it from the up and coming oil and pigment work. I personally add two coats of matte varnish as I'm quite aggressive uh, with my uh, weathering stages. So that completes um, part two of the ongoing build of the Bison. Um, uh, part three, we'll, we'll look at the decals and um, also the oils with the um, oil paint rendering systems.